Good morning, everyone. I think let's get started and um, we'll be recording this for anyone who wants to catch up later. My name is Michaela. I'm the proposal manager for Beyond Essential and I'll be running this demo today. For anyone who didn't join last month, we were previously doing Tomato community demos, um, but we're working in Tapaya as well now. Since all the software feeds into each other and works so well together, it's really good to be able to give a more holistic overview of all the different stuff that we've been working on. So today we're gonna run through a few different things. First, we're gonna hear from Regina about a couple of mini updates we've had to Tamanu. Um, and then McLean is gonna take us through Tamanu's overall network architecture. Typo there, apologies. And then we'll be hearing from Jerry about Tapaya and the table flipper and export tools that are available there. But before we get into that, we always bring up our overall tech stack to give you a sense of how everything works together. Um, we can go into this in more detail another time and I can share the link to the previous webinars where we unpack it all a little bit more. But just to give you a sense of how Tamanu, Tapaya, also Msplay and DHIS2 are all working together to minimize data entry across an unnecessary number of tools. And this is the five principles of Tamanu. Again, if you've joined a couple of our webinars, this may all be really familiar, but for anyone who is new, Tamanu is sync enabled. So it works offline wherever you are. Um, it's designed specifically for these contexts in the Pacific where we're working, where you aren't always able to connect to the internet. It's free, open source, works both on desktop and on mobile. So you can be out in the field entering data on your tablet and it's all gonna sync back overall. Data is fully encrypted and it's interoperable and integrated with DHIS2 and mSupply. And this is a bit of an overview of our software and beyond essential. We're a certified B corporation, which is really excited. Um, Tamanu is ONC certified and listed in the Global Goods Guidebook. I think it's the only EMR for the Pacific listed there. And more recently, we've won a couple of awards, which we're really excited about um, with the Commonwealth Digital Health Awards and the World Health Organization's Innovation Challenge as well. So I'm going to jump to, who's going fast, Regina now, um, to take us through some mini features in Tamanu. So over to you, Regina. Thanks, Michaela. So yeah, my name is Regina. I am one of the project managers at BS. Just bring up, whoop, you just need to enable screen sharing there for me. Give me just a second. You should be able to. Amazing. Okay. So I'm going to go, I'll start off with some of the user experience and user interface enhancements that's come along with version 1.17 of Tamanu. So when you first log in to version 1.17, you'll notice some major updates to the navigation bar. So lots of nice changes to the look and feel of the menu. And we've got the addition of these drop down buttons, um, which hide and reveal um, sub menus, which is a little bit different. Um, you'll also see that the colors of the patient um, menus now line up with the encounters. So what that means is our green inpatient sub menu now looks nice and matches our hospital admission um, encounter box here when we go into the patient main screen. Um, we've also made improvements to the encounter box itself. So it shows you what type of encounter is active for our patient Curtis Collins here. Um, the location, where, what time he arrived, all these kinds of important information so you can kind of get to see where Curtis is up to um, at a quick glance. The other um, change that you'll notice um, with version 1.17 is the addition of this user panel here um, at the bottom of the patient, sorry, the main navigation menu shows you who's logged into Tamanu, the version that you're running off, um, and the logout button has also been moved to this main user panel down the bottom. It used to sit at the bottom under immunization. So if you're looking for it, that's where it's hanging out now. Um, a little simple change, but we've um, moved the administration panel to the very bottom of this menu here. It just keeps it nice and distinct from any other kind of clinical menus. Um, hopefully makes that a little bit easier to differentiate. 
We've also removed all programs, the option for all programs from the main navigation menu. We just found that the first instinct for users when completing a survey is generally to go into the patient main screen to complete any clinical survey forms. Um, they still exist. So if you're trying to complete a clinical survey form for a patient, you can do so as normal from the patient um, main screen by clicking programs at the top. Um, or if you wanna record um, a patient survey directly to an encounter, just opening up there an encounter and coming into programs. So that hasn't changed. Um, you'll also see just the look and feel of the patient detail sidebar has changed. The head has changed a little bit. Um, and we've also made some changes to the search fields uh, right across to Manu. So it's kind of a little bit tricky to explain, but um, generally the ordering of the search results have been improved. So when you're searching for and beginning to type in a field, so I'll bring up if um, I want to record that Curtis has got some paroxysmal um, SVT, if I type in paroxysmal, that will now be my first search result, which might not have been previously in, pre in previous versions of Shimano. Um, if I'm searching instead for my first word, ventricular, again, this should come up as your first um, search result. Difficult one to explain, but hopefully when you get into using um, version 1.17 and beyond, you'll just notice that it's a lot quicker um, to find exactly what you're looking for if you're using those dynamic search fields. So generally that's all I've got to show um, in the UX and UI improvements. I'll move on now to the additional field we've added to the vaccine administration form. So let's bring up my patient, Philly. Cool. So um, we've included a new given by field on the vaccine administration form on both, de both desktop and mobile. So I'm going to record a booster for Tilly, so a COVID booster. If I open up my give vaccine module, you'll see that we've got the addition of this given by field. So complete the details for my booster, sake of completeness. Um, right, so this given by field, we've purposely chosen to make it a free text field. We think this is especially useful if you're inputting historical vaccination records into Tamanu. So the person doesn't actually have to have a user profile in Tamanu in order to record who actually gave it. So the purpose of this is we understand that it, the person who actually gives the vaccination and who might record the vaccination in Tamanu are often two different people. So the addition of this given by field kind of allows you to differentiate between those two people. Um, let me just fill it up out completely for you. Now, the details of who gave the vaccination will only be visible in the vaccination table. It won't appear on the vaccination certificate. So you'll see all these details just come up when I try and open the vaccination record. When I come into the view, the certificate, um, we don't need to worry about if there's incomplete details for who gave the vaccination. It won't appear on the actual vaccination certificate. Um, cool, I'll quickly show you what that looks like in mobile. So let me bring up my emulator. Okay, so this is what it would look like on mobile if I was um, working in that new given by field. So I'll show Tilly. Oh, um, select my vaccine button, come over to campaign. We'll give Tilly a typhoid vaccination for the sake of this demonstration. And you'll see given by field also exists in mobile as well. I'll just fill it out. And we'll say, yeah, so here's it going. So a couple of quick wins there, um, but hopefully it makes your lives a lot easier when you're recording vaccinations in the field and inputting um, historical vaccination records. Over to you, Michaela. Thank you so much for that, Regina. Um, does anyone have any follow-up questions to that? Athena, I think is typing. Uh, we'll circle back for questions uh, later as well. Regina will still be on the call, I think, so we can oh, come sure. back to that. 
Um, no thank you, Regina. No um, McLean, over to you to run us through Timonia's network architecture. Hello, yes. Uh, just let me share my screen. Oh, that's the wrong screen. Hold on a second. Let me show the correct screen. Uh, is this uh, visible? Tamani Network, Network Architecture? Yep. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, today I'm just going to give a brief explanation of Tamanu's Network Architecture. Uh, by the way, my name is McLean. I am the lead developer on uh, Tamanu. Um, so uh, Tamanu, uh, our offline first sync system is designed for remote settings or when there are unstable internet connections. Uh, but obviously if you have a stable internet connection, that's not going to break anything. Um, uh, Tamanu will, will work in that setup as well. Um, I'm just going to go over how that network architecture sort of fits together and the sort of different options that we have in the way that those uh, different pieces get arranged. Uh, there's four main parts to the network architecture, and I'm going to go into these in a little bit more detail. And uh, don't worry if I uh, say anything technical, um, you don't need to understand it completely, but hopefully this just gives you a, a sort of overview of the way that it all works. So there's the central server, the facility servers, the desktop app, and the mobile app. And I'll go into these in detail now. So the first key component to Tamanu is the central server. There's one of these for the country or the organization, and it manages all of the data uh, that goes through the entire system. So uh, it, it stores all of that data. There's one central database. Um, as the different servers communicate data to the central server, it coordinates that data to make sure that each different sort of piece of the system has the data that it wants access to, make sure everything has up-to-date information. And it also has a couple of other smaller pieces that uh, just do the sort of tasks that need visibility over the whole data set. So some of the reports, for example, if you need a countrywide report, you're going to need the whole data set. So that's what the central server is responsible for. Uh, the central server, um, where does it live? Sort of anywhere. It can be physically located in a building that you can just you know, go to and visit. This might be in a Ministry of Health in an IT department somewhere. Uh, but we can also put it in a what gets called a, a cloud environment. So this is just installed in a, in a server that's just living in a rack of servers in a data center somewhere. Um, that data center can be located in country. It can be located uh, internationally as well. The, um, the main one that we use is uh, located in Sydney, uh, but there's uh, ones in Singapore. They're, they're all over the place. Um, and yeah, there's, there's different providers for those data centers as well. There's AWS, there's Azure. Um, these are all, all of these options are just a different computer located in a different place that we've installed Tamanu on. Uh, so that's the central server. I'll talk about the facility servers now. So all the data goes through the central server um, and some of that data is coming from the facility server, which is uh, this icon on the, on the side here. Uh, the facility server is responsible for managing all the data for a single facility. Uh, so this might be a hospital or a clinic um, and it uh, is responsible for, for actually managing that data, doing the actual uh, business logic on the data that's going through it, as well as sending that data up to the central server whenever there's an internet connection available. Um, where does the facility server live? Similar answer, it can live anywhere. It can live on site at that facility, uh, which has the advantage of if that facility's internet connection to the outside world goes down, the facility server is still fully operational. Anyone at that facility can still use Tamanu completely uninterrupted. And then when the internet comes back on, it'll start sending data back to the, the central server. Um, the facility server can also live uh, in the cloud in a data center uh, that can be remotely. Uh, that is a slightly more flexible option because you don't have to carry a hardware around. You don't need physical access to the device. You, you can just um, control it remotely in the data center. But of course, if the internet connection at that facility goes down, the, the, the facility server is not on site. And so the, uh, the, there will be an outage in that regard. So it's, it's always a bit of a trade-off with the facility. Um, and that is a decision that can be made per facility. It doesn't have to be all on site or all in the cloud, depending on your requirements. You can have some installed on site, some on the cloud. That combination is totally supported. Uh, the next component is the desktop app. Uh, this is the uh, software that's installed on the just user-facing computers at each facility. This is the actual display that people see, that people are interacting with. 
And the desktop app's uh, responsibility is to display information that it receives from the facility server. So this might be a patient's medical history. This might be uh, you know, a list of checked in patients or appointments. Um, and it also instructs the facility server in what to do. So adding a diagnosis or you know, any other sort of manipulation of that data. Uh, where does the desktop app live? On the desktop computer, the, uh, yeah. Uh, finally, there's the mobile application. Uh, the mobile application has uh, a bit less functionality than uh, to my new desktop, uh, but it works completely offline. The, the desktop application needs a, co a connection to the facility server to work. Uh, the mobile application is a bit more self-contained. Uh, so that just works uh, completely offline and kind of like the facility server, will just send and receive data from the central server directly uh, whenever that internet connection is available. Uh, so in summary, we've got the central server that manages all of the data for the entire country or organization. We've got the facility server that does the sort of day-to-day -day tasks and communicates with the central server. We've got the desktop app, which interacts with the facility server to show data and instruct data. And the mobile application, which is a portable subset of the uh, Tamani functionality. And uh, that is the end of the network architecture explanation. That's great. Back to you, Michaela. Thank you, McLean. I love the visuals for that presentation as well. <laughs> you can thank uh, oh. Michael for those. <laughs> um, so anyone have any questions for McLean on any of that? OK, um, I do want to loop back to Athena's question for anyone who isn't reading the chat or is watching this after. Regina asked, is there a particular reason why vaccination data can be edited on mobile and not on Tamani desktop? Uh, Regina, do you want to speak to that or Michael, since you've been answering? Maybe Michael, did you want to speak to that one? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, so I, I was just replying to Athena that uh, it's, a, it's a really good question because there's no good reason. The original design was that you know, most of the data for vaccines is entered through mobile. And so most of the, um, the editing we allowed through mobile and we allowed you to delete a vaccine in desktop, but not to edit it. But these days, yeah, usage is probably more evenly split. A lot of people use desktop to um, to enter vaccines, maybe from an old paper record or to edit something where they've noticed a discrepancy. So it's probably just a feature that we should that we should build. Um, one workaround that we have used ourselves before occasionally when troubleshooting is that um, if you really want to change a vaccine record and you only have access to desktop, you can completely delete it and then re-enter it. Um, and that's perfectly, perfectly fine. But we realise it's a bit time consuming and it's probably not um, technically the, the correct thing to do. So, um, yeah, we might put that on our list of features to build the ability to edit in, in desktop. There's no sort of firm reason that well, this is why it has to be that way. So, um, so yeah, I, it's a nice, nice bit of feedback from, from Athena. Great, thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions on the Tamanu side of things before we move on? Okay, great. As always, put it in the chat if something else comes up. I'll now hand over to Jerry to run us through some cool features on Tapaya. Thanks, Michaela. Um, hi, everyone. Let me just share my screen real quick. Can everybody both hear me and see my screen? I was having a few troubles with my audio earlier. Looks and sounds good. Cool. All righty. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Jerry. And as Michaela mentioned, we're going to switch to Tapaya now. Um, I just want to briefly go through a couple of really handy tools that I find personally um, quite useful as a health information officer. And I tend to use them almost on a day to day basis. And these are the table flipper and visualization export tools. Um, so the best way to do this, obviously, is go through to an example. So I might go through to a PacMozzie project that I'm working on. Um, firstly, let's zoom in and find some data. As we all know, these are our visualizations in Tapaya. They're fairly interactive in regards to being able to click and view information and data. But there's two little features here that are not so obvious, but are actually quite um, helpful. And this, this is the table flipper. 
And this little feature up here is the data export tool. Um, very briefly, first, the table flip but basically shows you the behind the scenes information that goes into making these visualizations. And so this is available on all uh, visualizations within Papaya. Um, also quite, quite, a, quite a useful information, uh, or a useful feature to um, access raw data, which I'll show you uh, after the, um, the exports. So basically, during my day-to-day -day work, and I find, and I'm sure my colleagues across the Pacific will also find this, a common task that we are, are tasked to do as health information officers is to generate reports, share information, provide data. Um, sometimes this is quite a challenging uh, process, particularly uh, in some of the areas that we're working. One of the things we can do in Tapaya is basically quickly export our uh, data that we have as visualizations within Tapaya. And so I will repeat that. I'll show that again. This little feature here is our uh, export tool. And so basically all we need to do is when we go to a visualization that we want to share or reproduce or importantly put into a uh, what that we might need to make, we can simply click the export button on our visualization. And we have a few options here uh, in regards to how we want to generate this information. So I have two main options that where we can generate. So if I want to generate my visualization here, which is a bar chart of adult mosquitoes that have been found in Palau, I can export this as a PNG option, which is a, a, an image file. And we have a few display options here as well. So I'll go through these individually. Firstly, we can just export the, the raw PNG data. Let's simply click the PNG button and click export. And what this will do is it'll take it to your downloads folder in your uh, computer. And then we have a very simple, but very handy uh, image file that we can use and share. Um, so I, could, I, I can use that quickly to insert into a, a, a monthly report or an annual report or any type of information, I can email that to my colleagues. We may also want some data labels on here, and we might want to ex export the, the raw table data as well. And so these are display options that are quite simple to check. And again, we can export this information, and that'll show up in your downloads folder as well. So fairly simple feature, but quite useful, I find, particularly, again, for my routine reporting um, that I generally do quite regularly. And I know all of our information officers across the Pacific also do. The other feature I do wanna show you, and this is, I find extremely useful and sometimes can be challenging in other information systems that we have, and that is to access the raw data that's behind our tables. So again, what, what information have we got from our information system? So usually through the surveys, or um, other, other means where we collect our data, how can I access this information so that I can basically do more than just create a standardized visualization? So again, same thing, I can access my, this through the export chart, but select my raw data. And what this is gonna give us is quite simply a Excel-based um, data sheet. So it's a very simple data table, but Again, when we go through and I can show you some example, some visualizations with more data points in it as well. But this basically provides me the raw data where I can, I can use this. So for example, one of my common tasks that I need to do is, is to create customized data maps regularly. And so I can take this information, export it directly into a, a GIS mapping program. Some of the other things that we do as information officers is we need to run statistics. We can import this information. We can, uh, from Excel and into statistics packages and run some more uh, sort of what we would call bespoke uh, analyses, and or we can just work with this in export. Um, uh, sorry, we can work with this in Excel to to basically create some more customized, usable data that goes beyond just a visualization or standard visualization or standard um, report. So again, it's all about having access to your data, as well as being able to utilize your data in a more flexible way. Um, so that's basically all I really wanted to go through uh, today on the visualization platform. Basically, just want to encourage everyone to use Tapaya. It's available on all the um, 
visualizations. So all the visualizations that you would be working with with your country, we can uh, do the same type of thing that we just went through now, which is quite flexible and usable. And that's it. That's my demo for today. So oh, back over to you, uh, Michaela. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions for Jerry on any of that? Or any general Kaya questions just while we're here? Great. Okay. Well, thank that's it from us then. Happy to free up everyone's mornings. Um, thank you so much for coming. This will be uploaded and posted on YouTube later today to be shared with anyone else who may have missed it. Thank you so much to all the presenters and to all of you for coming.